we are going to start a series of videos uh, on communication. The first video is going to cover channels of communication. The second video on modulation. And the third one on digital communication. So without much further ado, we're going to start with uh, channels of communication. Information can be carried by a number of different channels as follows. Wire pairs. Now, the wire pairs are uh, shown here. So we have got information uh, transmitted from the positive uh, to, the, to a buzzer, and then from there to the negative. Now, and then we've got a transmitter that is in between. So a transmitter is connected to a receiver by a pair of insulated copper wires. There's very high attenuation of fre high frequency signals, so repeated amplification must be provided at regular intervals. Energy is lost as heat in the resistance of the wires and also as radiation since the wires act as aerials. Several wire pairs are arranged next to one another and they will pick up each other's signals. This is called crosstalk or cross-linking and gives very poor security. So someone can tap into your con a conversation so it is not secure. A large amount of information cannot be carried as the bandwidth of uh, a pair of wires is only about 500 kilohertz. In modern communications, wire pairs are used mainly for very short distances uh, with low frequencies only. Uh, a bandwidth of a channel is the range of frequencies that a communication channel can accommodate. It is a measure of the rate at which information can be transmitted through a channel. The wider the bandwidth, the more quickly information can be sent through the channel. Now the second uh, channel of communication is the coaxial cable. A coaxial cable is, is shown, it has got a ca plastic covering and then it has a uh, polythene as an insulator and then we've got a copper braid that is the outer conductor. Now a copper wire is right inside the, which is the inner conductor. So the signal is transmitted down through the inner conductor. The outer conductor acts as the return wire and also shields the inner core from external interference. The outer conductor is usually connected to earth Coaxial cable causes less attenuation of the signal. So for long distance communication, repeat amplifiers can be arranged further apart. Coaxial cables are less prone to external interference, so they offer slightly greater security. The bandwidth of coaxial cable is about 50 megahertz, so it is capable of carrying more information than a wire pair. The next one is uh, radio and, and microwave links. Alternating current in a wire acts as an aerial. Energy is radiated from the aerial in the form of electromagnetic waves, which travel outwards from the aerial with the speed of light. Radio waves are electromagnetic waves in the frequency range 30 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. Radio waves can, be, uh, uh, can travel by different paths, as shown. So we do have uh, our ionosphere here, and then radio waves. Uh, so we've got ionosphere, then we've got satellite here, uh, a transmitter that sends the signal, and then it's received there, and then reflected back or transmitted back. Now... Um, we do have uh, space waves there, that's on one, and then surface waves close to the Earth, and then sky waves uh, in the ionosphere, or close to the ionosphere. Rather. Surface or ground waves diffract around the Earth's surface because of their long wavelengths, giving them a long range. AM, that is amplitude modulated, uh, modulated uh, waves, broadcast in the uh, medium wave to low 
wave um, uh, bands. So long wave bands, medium wave and long wave bands uh, travel as surface waves. Sky waves can travel large distances around the Earth through multiple reflections by the ionosphere and the ground. Shortwave radio uses the uh, frequencies of the high frequency band that reflect from the ionosphere. Space waves pass through the ionosphere and the transmission is by line of sight. So what it means is if uh, the wave, uh, if, if, if there's something that is uh, a, a barrier along the line, it, it then uh, interferes with the wave. So it's by line of sight. Microwaves pass through the ionosphere to reach satellites and then Bluetooth technology and Wi-Fi use microwaves. Now, the following is a table that uh, describes these uh, waves in um, uh, summary format. So we do have uh, the type of wave, the frequency, communication method, and wave band, as well as um, the range. So we've already talked about these, but let's just go over them again. Uh, surface waves or ground waves, the ones that are close to the Earth's surface, they are below 3 megahertz. And then these are long wave, medium wave, uh, in the uh, low frequency band, up to 1,000 kilometers uh, in uh, radius. That is the range that they, they can travel. Sky waves, 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz, uh, these are shortwave radio in the high frequency band, worldwide by reflection from ionosphere in the ground. Then we've got space waves, which are greater than 30 megahertz. That's where you get your FM radio in the VHF, that is very high frequency band uh, television and mobile phones in the um, ultra high frequency band. So that's where you have your Star FM, Power FM, and all sorts of uh, uh, radio stations. These are also by line of sight between transmitter and receiver, uh, also uh, satellite communication. Then above the space waves, you do have the microwaves, which are from 1 to 300 gigahertz. And microwave, uh, uh, the communication method here is through microwave uh, satellite links and Wi-Fi. In the up in the super high frequency that is SHF super high frequency and extra high frequency that is EHF. So remember we do have the uh, the LF low frequency, then we've got the high frequency in the sky waves, then we've got the very high frequency, and then we have the ultra high frequency, and then we've got the super high frequency SHF, and then we do have the extra high frequency, which is the EHF, that is the highest. This is also by line of sight, except when re-transmitted uh, uh, by the satellite. So if you remember the electromagnetic spectrum, you do have to remember that. Radio waves have the... the, the the, the longest wavelength, but the shortest uh, uh, with the smallest frequency. So the part of the electromagnetic spectrum used for radio communication is that is from radio waves to microwaves thereabout. So that's all for communication. Now to go over each of these uh, separately, we do have uh, uh, the long wave radio, which is 30 to 300 kilohertz. And then we've got the wavelength is about 10 kilometers to one kilometer. Low frequency, that, and then uh, these are used in the submarine radio or uh, amplitude modulated broadcasts. Then we've got the medium wave radio, or medium uh, radio waves, 300 to 3 megahertz. The wavelength in air is one kilometer to 100 meters. And then uh, in the um, MF, medium frequency. Then also suitable for AM broadcasting. Shortwave radio, 
frequency range 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz wavelength in air 100 meters to 10 meters and then frequency band that is the high frequency and then these are used in ship communication fm used in aircraft communication that's the frequency range 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz the wavelength 10 meters to 1 meter and uh, in the vhf band high a uh, very high frequency band tv broadcasting and mobile phones the the uses are in the microwave links and the uh, radar frequency range is 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz the wavelength in air 1 meter to 10 centimeters ultra high frequency microwave links for satellite communication and then the frequency is 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz the wavelength is 10 centimeters to 1 centimeter and uh, the frequency band is the shf super high frequency then we have uh, satellite links which are now used in uh, radio astronomy for uh, in in, uh, in uh, uh, spaceships 30 gigahertz and th to 300 gigahertz is the frequency and then we do have the wavelength is one centimeter to one millimeter and then uh, uh, frequency band is ehf which is uh, extra high frequency microwaves are radio waves in the shf band that is from 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz with wavelengths of only a few centimeters they are generally used to uh, for point to point communication is illustrated in this one here so we have a transmitter let me just push it up a bit so we do have a transmitter so the transmitter uh, focuses yes so there's a transmitter element that displaces the focus of the parabolic mirror it sends the signal to the parabolic mirror and then parallel rays are sent so they are sent in the form of par parallel rays then when they reach the receiver the receiver is also parabolic it then uh, concentrates the signals to the receiver like that A parabolic reflector placed in the path of this beam reflects and focuses the wave power onto a receiving element. The bandwidth of a microwave link is of the order of gigahertz. Consequently, microwave links have a very high capacity of, for carrying information. Now, I think you've noticed that from the tables above, as the, f the wavelength is decreasing, the frequency range is increasing. So what we want here is the frequency for uh, broadcasting. So the higher the frequency, the better the communication. But also the, uh, the range will be very small. That is, the wavelength becomes small. So knowing the frequency, the wavelength can be found using the wave equation. Uh, the distance traveled by a radio wave uh, varies with its frequency. The wavelength of a radio wave uh, determines the length of the area. So you remember the, the walkie-talkies, the ones that are used for uh, communication, very close communication in companies or farms, they do have a very long area. Why? Because the frequency at which they are broadcast is very very small so the area is large when you look at the mobile phone the cell phone the area is very small why because the frequency of the microwave that is being used there is very high but the first micro uh, sorry, mobile phones that were used used to have a, a long area because the frequency that they were broadcasting was uh, 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 very was small As the frequency of the carriers or the carrier wave increases, the bandwidth also increases. So what we want here is the bandwidth, the, the, the frequency at which we can send these uh, signals without any distortion. Then uh, we are going to talk about uh, satellites and optic fibers. 
satellite communication. In satellite communication, uh, a carrier wave of frequency F up, that is the frequency of sending up, this one here, is sent from a transmitter on Earth to a satellite. The satellite receives the greatly attenuated uh, signal because uh, when the signal goes up, it uh, suffers attenuation along the way. So when this happens, the, the signal needs to be uh, reamplified so that it can be sent down without, uh, with, with less distortions. Otherwise, if you send the signal without being amplified on the satellite, nothing will be received right at the end there. So the signal needs to be amplified. Uh, and then uh, a carrier frequency is changed to a lower value that is F down. So the frequency of going up should be larger than the frequency of going down. And, transmit, and then it is transmitted down uh, back again to Earth. Different carrier frequencies are used so that the very, uh, very low power signal received by the satellite is not swamped by, from a high power signal that is transmitted back to Earth. Values of the uplink frequency and the downlink frequency could be 64 or 1411 or 3020. That is in the gigahertz band. So 6 will be the up one, 4 will be the down one, 14 will be the up one, 11 will be the down one, and so forth and so on. Now the advantage of this uh, satellite communication is that um, long distance communication on the short wave and mid uh, medium wave bands are unreliable. Sky waves rely on the ionosphere for reflection, but the ionosphere layer varies in height and density according to the time of the day. The satellite boosts the signal for its return to Earth and provides a stronger signal that is obtained by reflection from the ionosphere. Higher frequencies are used which have a higher bandwidth and can carry more information per second. And then uh, more frequencies are available for communicating if a satellite uses higher frequencies. The communication satellite may be in a geostationary orbit. If you remember from the uh, gravitation, gravitational fields, we talked about geostationary orbit and then said this is the uh, this is an equatorial orbit, which is uh, the same period as that of, of the, the rotation of the Earth about its axis. So a geostationary orbit, we have, if you remember in the uh, gravitational fields, we calculated the height above the Earth is about 3.6 times 10 to the power 4 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The satellite orbits in the same direction as the rotation of the Earth, that is from west to east, and the orbit is always above the equator. And then we do have what are called polar orbits or polar satellites. We talked about these again, which have low orbits and pass over the poles with a period of rotation of just about 90 minutes. Now, geostationary satellites, the transmitting and receiving areas can be fixed in position since the satellite does not have to be tracked. They can have a permanent link with the transmitting ground station. They do allow for continuous communication between ground station and anywhere on Earth that can receive the signal from the satellite. So international TV uh, broadcasts are possible. So you can broadcast and then since it's uh, always rotating about the same uh, uh, position or over the same position all the time, you can rely on it to relay information downwards. Communication in polar regions may not be possible because a satellite will not be in line of sight. So here we do have problems with polar regions only. The height above the edge surface of the satellite causes a delay in a telephone conversation. Um, that's why when you are on a WhatsApp call, you need to, to, to wait a bit because there's a delay between this, the sending of the signal and the coming back of the signal. Now let's talk about uh, polar satellites. These are in low orbits, 
resulting in short time delays between transmission and receipt of a signal. As a result of the Earth's rotation, satellites will orbit above every point on the Earth's surface. And these are used for remote sensing, weather forecasting, and spying. Remote sensing, you know, that is your GPS when you want to travel from one place to another and you've never been to that place, you can use uh, 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 remote sensing GPS. Now, these are controlled using these polar satellites. Continuous communication with a single polar satellite is not possible. So you need to have so many of them so that one would receive and the other one would then transmit. Uh, or would. Uh, to maintain continuous links, a network of polar satellites is required. Just as I'm saying, the satellites must be tracked and the link switched from one satellite to another. Then I'm going to talk about uh, the advantages of optic fibers. Optic fibers can carry digital information in the form of pulses of light or infrared radiation. These pulses are provided by lasers and the light produced is very high frequencies of the order of 10 to the power of 8 megahertz. The advantages of transmission using optic fibers are indicated below. Optic fibers have a wide bandwidth and can carry more information per second. And they suffer less attenuation. So repeater and generation amplifiers can be further apart. The cost of optic fiber is much less than that of metal wire. That is, you are comparing it with the wire pairs, remember? Uh, optic fibers weigh less and so large lengths can be handed uh, or handled more easily. More difficult to tap, more secure data can be carried. Optic fibers do not pick up electromagnetic interference since they are made of plastic or glass. Optic fiber is ideal for digital transmissions since the light is obtained from lasers that can be switched on and off rapidly. And then I have this table uh, which shows a communication channel and the advantages and disadvantages. Right, wire pairs, they are used for short distance communicating at low frequencies. They suffer very high attenuation. They suffer from crosstalk and if with very low security. They have limited bandwidth that is above about uh, 500 kilohertz. Coaxial cables, they are more costly than a wire pair. They, they suffer less attenuation, less noisy, more secure, and they've got higher bandwidth, about 50 megahertz. Radio waves, the frequency range is about, uh, from 30 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. The distance of propagated depends uh, on the frequency VHF and UHF wave bands are used for mobile phones because the wavelength is small and the area can be short. Microwave. Frequency range 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz. The link is by line of sight. They have large bandwidth, large capacity for carrying information. Then lastly, we've got optic fibers, which have a large bandwidth, large transmission capacity, lower cost than the metal wires, easier to handle and store because thinner and lighter than uh, they are thinner and lighter than the metal cables. They have got very low signal power loss and they do not pick up electromagnetic interference so they have very high security and negligible crosstalk. Now definition of some terms that I've used um, in this video. Noise. Noise is the unwanted random energy or power which is added to the information signal. So usually this noise accumulates as uh, the distance increases, that is between the transmitter and the receiver. Attenuation is the gradual loss of energy or power of a signal as it passes through a transmission medium. And then lastly, crosstalk or crosslinking is the picking up of a signal in one cable from an adjacent cable. My video ends here uh, for this uh, communication. Uh, that is uh, uh, channels of communication. Uh, please do interact, do comment on anything that uh, you do not, uh, you, you need further clarification on.
signing out. <laughs>